Hi, my name is Martina. I'm a master's student at the University of Rijeka, Department of Physics, studying for an MSc in Physics and Environmental Science. And today I want to talk about properties of a very interesting material, aluminum oxide. Aluminum oxide, or alumina, is a chemical compound of aluminum and oxygen, with the chemical formula Al2O3. Let's start by taking a look at the formula and structure of aluminum oxide. The compound is ionic in nature, because it contains a metal, aluminum, and a non-metal oxygen. The metal always donates electrons to the non-metal to form the ionic bond. In the case of aluminum, it always forms an ion with a plus 3 charge, and oxygen always forms an ion with a minus 2 charge. Since the overall charge of a compound must always be equal to zero, we need two aluminum atoms and three oxygen atoms in order to balance out the charge and make the compound neutral. This means that the chemical formula for aluminum oxide is simply Al2O3, as I said earlier. Aluminum oxide is a very special compound which can crystallize in different forms. It occurs naturally in its crystalline polymorphic phase as the mineral corundum, varieties of which form the precious gemstones ruby and sapphire. Okay, now we know the formula and structure of aluminum oxide. Now I want to talk about anodization. Anodization is an electrolytic passivation technique used to increase the thickness of the natural oxide layer on metal surfaces. Anodizing approach is able to build metal oxide nanopores of controllable pore size, good uniformity, array orderly and conformability over large areas at low cost via a simple electrochemical experimental procedure. Depending on several factors, in particular the electrolyte, two types of anodic films can be produced, barrier and porous type. Porous alumina is one of the most prominent template materials for synthesis of nanowires or nanotubes with monodispersed controllable diameter and high aspect ratios. The potential applications in electrochemical devices, quantum wires and electrodes for rechargeable lithium batteries are just some of the numerous areas that have been explored. Another interesting characteristic is its biological properties and for years has been used in dental and bone implants due to its biocompatibility and ease of integration with medical implant. The structure of porous anodic aluminum oxide is hexagonal and it's characterized by a large number of mutually parallel pores extending through the film to the oxide metal interfaces where each cylindrical nanopore is closed by a thin barrier oxide layer with hemispherical geometry. Each pore and the region surrounding it comprise a hexagonal cell. These cells are self-organized in the form of a hexagonally closed packed structure just like a honeycomb. In general, the structure of self-ordered porous anodic aluminum oxide is often defined by several structural parameters, such as interpore distance, pore diameter, barrier layer thickness, pore wall thickness, pore density and porosity. Now I want to show you our experimental setup. Here we have two electrode system, cathode and anode, both polished aluminium plates that are immersed in electrolyte, in our case phosphoric acid. The current is passing through the electrolyte and because of that our system is heating up. And we want to control the temperature of electrolyte and because of that our system is immersed in this big plastic container filled with ice. That current that is passing through the electrolyte is from this current voltage source that we control by this computer. One of the characteristics of the current voltage source is the possibility of working at a constant current or constant voltage which enables us to control the growth of the alumina layer. Before the start of the anodization process, we put a limit on the current voltage source of 50 million pairs and in the first 30 minutes of the anodization process, the voltage was raised at equal time intervals until a current of 50 million pairs was reached. And because of that, we use this computer software to precisely control the current. The graph shows the voltage dependence on time. 
The voltage required to achieve a current of 50 mA depends on the electrolyte concentration. An electrolyte with a higher concentration of phosphoric acid has a higher concentration of charge carriers, in other words ions, so the electrical resistance of the electrolyte is lower. The voltage required to achieve a current of 50 mA is lower with electrolytes of higher concentration. It can be seen that the voltage to achieve a current of 50 mA in an electrolyte with a concentration of 100 mm is approximately 165 volts, while for an electrolyte with a concentration of 80 mm, approximately 170 volts, and for an electrolyte with a concentration of 60 mm, approximately 180 volts. In all synthesis, a slight increase in voltage is in line with expectations because the thickness of the oxide layer increases and thus the electrical resistance of the resulting layer. Etching is carried out in order to corrode the sample with acid and thus produce expansion and cleaning of the formed pores by anodizing process. All three samples were etched for one hour in 85% phosphoric acid after the anodization process. The obtained samples were analyzed with a scanning electron microscope. The analysis of the surface of the samples and the cross-section of one of the samples was performed by a lower electron detector of secondary ions with a voltage of 10 kV and a working distance of 10 mm at magnifications of 30,000 and 10,000 times. The pore diameter was determined by the computer program SmileView. From the obtained images of the sample surfaces, it was noticed that the pore width does not differ significantly with the change in electrolyte concentration, which is not in line with expectations. One of the possible reasons for the results obtained this way is the temperature of the electrolyte, which was not the same in all three anodization, but varied between 12 to 16 degrees Celsius. The electron microscope was also used to record the cross-section of a sample synthesized in 100 mm phosphoric acid solution and etched in 85% phosphoric acid for one hour. The sample was cooled with liquid nitrogen so that it could break and show a cross-section. The figure shows the cross-section of the obtained porous oxide layer with a thickness of about 5 micrometers. Cross-sectional analysis of a sample synthesized in 100 mm phosphoric acid solution was performed with a lead secondary ion detector at a voltage of 8 kV and an operating distance of 10 mm at a magnification of 12,000 times. Thanks for watching.